Hello and welcome to the Pocket Gamer Podcast. It is episode number 517. We are back after a short break following PGC and we are back with Rick Cowley. Hello. Returning conquering hero of the conference. Uh, you hosted <laughs> round tables, you did talks and panels and uh, was it fun or were you just uh, going, <laughs> please don't ask me things? I mean, uh, it was fun. It's nice to be in the the driving seat of those kinds of things, I suppose, because then nobody wants to ask you questions. They just want to answer your questions. Um, That's true. But no, it, it was fun. I did a, a fireside chat with Q Lee of Gameville and Come to Us, which mm-hmm. is really interesting. Um, I did a panel on the inevitable decline of ad revenue. I did a couple of roundtables about recruitment. So yeah, it was a nice big mixture of things to do, and it was fun to be a part of. And the rest of the PG Biz team was part of it as well. Uh, and it was just great to be like so involved with it. Um, more so than we usually are in our conferences because uh, mm. we don't have to stay in a hotel and fly across the world to do them. No, no. So this is the second of our digital conferences, if you're if you're following via the... By the way, hi on YouTube um, <laughs> and also in podcast land. Uh, you know because we've talked about these loads, but if you're just watching us for the first time on video, you might not be as familiar with all this stuff. But yes, we hold these big conferences called Pocket Gamer Connect and uh, it's big industry get together it's like an E3 or something but specifically for the mobile industry Um, we're doing it for years it's gotten bigger and bigger and then all of a sudden a virus happened and meant we couldn't do them anymore so we've taken them online we're doing them all with Zoom Uh, that's why everything went quiet last week on the video channel and there wasn't a podcast and things like that Um, It was great because I was stage managing a bunch of it, so I get to chase down people and go, we've got two speakers, three of them haven't turned up, this guy's here but he can't get his camera working, what's going on? Because I I inevitably end up being tech support. uh, (laughs) You you love it. You love being the man who everyone comes to when things go wrong. Uh, It's funny (laughs) enough, the problem with that is you get a reputation for it and then people start coming more, including my own family. I am like, if anything goes wrong with any of my brothers or my sister, there's kind of this like message I get. Hi, how sick if you are? I'm like, oh, they want to come and talk to me because I'm I'm their lovely brother. And then it's immediately like, this thing on the switch isn't working. Do you know how we can get logged in? Like, All right. All right. I know your Beautiful. game. Disgusting behavior. Uh, but we're obviously <laughs> delighted to be back and we're going to cover some news and some new releases and all the things we do on this show things like talking about the latest lawsuit to hit apple regarding loot boxes and their predatory look at my air quotes look at them apple don't sue me <laughs> predatory <laughs> gambling Ooh. Uh, we've got stuff about the game club subscription service and its arrival on android we can show you how to catch pokemon by cleaning your teeth because this is the world that we have made and also a bunch of new releases, including the likes of Endurance, Ruinverse, Slay the Spire, out on mobile, very exciting, and more. But first, the news. Lil, Lil winked camera there, big stretch. Water time. Oh. Um, num, 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 num. Lovely. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to find a way. You're all still watching this on YouTube. I'm going to find a way to get talking about uh, Star Wars Squadrons in here. Because I'm very excited. I don't care if it's not on mobile. I'm going to talk about it anyway. Uh, all right, then. Oh, we could talk about Skate 4 as well. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, let's just let's talk about... Let's talk about EA. Let's just yeah. have a chat, James. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sacking this all off right now. <laughs> <laughs> Screw this show. See any good films, lady. Uh, right. <laughs> so... The whole loot box controversy in gaming has been running ever since the first gacha appeared on our screens or the first hat appeared on a man in Team Fortress 2's head. Uh, And it's only kind of snowballed and continued to run. And it's not going to go away because loot boxes aren't going to go away. No matter how many lawsuits people throw at big companies. The latest in the line is a class action lawsuit, which has been thrown together by some folks in California, I think. And it's aimed at Apple, and the suggestion is, as they often are, is that these loot boxes, they encourage uh, predatory behavior on behalf of companies, and they try and get kids to to get addicted to gambling-like behaviors, uh, which leads to big profits for companies. Um, This isn't anything new. We've been talking about this for ages, haven't we? Yeah, this is just 
another day, another lawsuit, mm-hmm. another person complaining about gacha and in-app purchases and stuff like that. I think their sort of main complaint is that it isn't obvious enough on the app store that this game contains loot boxes, but right. it does say on the app store this game contains in-app purchases. And I think at this point in mobile games, you kind of have to accept that that's probably going to mean loot boxes at some point. Yeah. I like, mean... It, it's it's tricky because on the one hand, we're so like embedded in this world that of course we know that when we download a game for free, what that means is you download it for free and then they're going to try and get money out of you lots of different yeah. ways. And some games do it well, some games do it badly and cynically and, you know, there, there's always that stuff in the middle as well. But there's still that thing that parents are getting new kids and they've got wee ones and they give them their phone and they don't realise because maybe they've never played Peggle on their phone or whatever they were going to do before. And then they come back and they look at their bill at the end of the month and suddenly it's £2,000. And they go, oh, this is, this is definitely someone else's fault. And I <laughs> yeah. did definitely not me should have been looking at my child. Uh, and I, I think spending. that's the thing, isn't it? Is that, um, I mean, obviously, there's more that the industry could do to sort of make people aware of loot boxes and, and what actually they are and why people want to buy them and, and why they're still in, in, in games. Because you, the, I think a lot of the press around them is sort of negative and going, oh, well, they're predatory, they enable gambling, they're a gateway drug into a harder crack of poker. I don't know. Um, you know, it, it's it's that always that kind of thing where in actuality, like, if people weren't buying them, they wouldn't be there. Um, the, and I think that sort of needs to be talked about a little bit more is the fact that if like why do people buy them what's the psychological thing behind them who is actually buying these because as much as we hear the stories about like um oh my child spent three hundred dollars on fit for ultimate team last week or something like that Mm. and i and now it's apple's fault for not having parental controls um you know a, a lot of like the huge huge spenders are people with lots of money and therefore they can afford to spend that um, at least from what I've seen as a, as a business journalist, and obviously I, I'm probably corrupt by all that. And uh, you are and a corrupt what... games journal. That's exactly. Right. That's okay. all. I'm wearing the games journal outfit and everything. You've you got the shirt, shirt on. Yeah. Um, so I th- but I think there should be more to sort of educate parents on like how to educate your child on not buying these loot boxes and telling mm. your child maybe ask me first before you spend my money or setting parental controls on devices or not putting your credit card information on your device or setting up a separate account for your child or that kind of thing. Like, my my niece is, like, nine years old and has been playing crummy free mobile games, like, uh, ultra, ultra knockoffs of, like, sn- uh, Slither.io knockoffs. Like, oh, knockoffs of knockoffs. <laughs> um, and has never once, like... Oh, for God's sake. Ooh, hello. Um, sorry, I'm going to go, go for it. Go, go. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll do a cool splice here. And cut. Uncut. He's back from the front door or wherever you were. You were yes. talking about your niece. Uh, yeah, so my niece um, has been playing a lot of games and, you know, even from a young age, like, she never spent any money in game. It's never been a problem. It's because, you know, it partially helps that my sister and I both grew up playing games and we understand mm. the economies and that kind of thing. But also it's because my sister has explained to my niece, like, this is what games are like. This is why you shouldn't buy them. This is why I'm not putting my account on your <laughs> like device and this kind of thing. And if she wants right. to buy something, she has to go through my, my sister to get it. Always so. require password. That's the thing you need to click when you're doing the uh, the iOS purchases and whatnot. Exactly. But I, I kind of agree. I, I'm, I'm in the middle of the two camps because I do think that a lot of this stuff is very predatory. I do think it leans towards gambling. I don't mm. think gambling is good. I don't do gambling. I think it's bad. I've seen lives destroyed. And it's one of those things that you want to be very, very wary of. And I don't like the way a lot of stuff is implemented. I do think it's cynical. I do think they deliberately use psychological devices to try and get you hooked. I think all of this stuff is kind of true. But at the same time, like this has been true in lots of industries for ages. That's what Mm. marketing does and always has done for so many products that you use on a daily basis. And the same thing with, I mean, casinos themselves, like all of these things have always existed and you need to be educated and educate your kids to know what they're getting into. I think at the beginning, people weren't used to these things being in games. And that was the problem. Mm -hmm. where it's like suddenly it becomes it like invades the area where now this stuff exists here as well and people were surprised at first but it's been like 10 years more since the app store appeared and this is pretty par for the course now and uh, i don't think they're going to be able to do much to change the rules hugely 
the only thing they have to do is do it right and I'm gonna bring in this is my chance to bring in Star Wars Squadrons which I, they did the release trailer thing for on E3 not E3 uh, on the EA uh, little video and I've been waiting for this game Rick been waiting for a good <laughs> a good sequel to X-Wing for about 20 years no joke it was a huge formative experience playing as a kid. I absolutely love a proper flight simmy Star Wars thing where you controlled shield balances and power from ions to weapon, all that stuff. Uh, I've got VR now. I've got my Hotas. I am sitting here. My face is ready. Um, but you notice the messaging they put out for that game when they were when they were doing it because they did the whole like, hey, new Star Wars game is going to be great and it's going to have a single player campaign, which is all right, and it's going to have multiplayer, but all the upgrades you have to. You play the game to get all the upgrades that affect your ship, and there will be no in-app purchase. Are you? No, none of them. Please, please come back. I know what we did with Battlefront 2. I, please, we need your money. So they're really, like, conscious now of this yeah. whole, the backlash that can occur when you get your in-app purchases wrong. So I, I think people are just going to have to remain educated and make sure, for God's sake, don't just give... It's the whole... The other end of the spectrum is that people just like give their phone, their like thousand pound phone to their kid and then just go wander off and do something. Yeah. And in the meantime, their kids do everything. It's like, man, don't do that. Like, what do you think was going to happen? That's not, you got to get involved and <laughs> me with no kids, backseat parenting other parents. But still, <laughs> absolutely, don't just give them a grand's worth of device and yeah, 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 you go fill your boots. They're online. They could be doing anything. Do some parenting, God damn it. Uh, so, We'll see how this turns out. My guess is not a lot will happen because, to be honest, not a lot's happened with many of the lawsuits that have come. And despite a few things of like the Nev, was it the Netherlands somewhere in the Nordic area? I feel like they did manage to get them brief. It classified as like a gambling thing. Yeah, there was some ruling. I think it was Netherlands. I think France maybe have done it as well. Yeah, there's a hmm. few countries in Europe where I'm fairly certain like developers have had to just pull their loot boxes from their games um, from fear of retribution from the government kind of mm. thing so but, yeah uh, you know attitudes are changing and and maybe there'll be something in the future where this works i don't think we're at that point now where um a, a mass a class action against apple is suddenly going to change anything or get people repaid their uh mistaken in-app purchases or anything like that no but hey th things change times are changing they do. The model was disruptive when it appeared, but as we've said many times, and you said earlier, like the reason they're there is because people want them because they yep. spend loads of money in it, and that's why it's the whole sector is bigger than PC and uh, console combined. That's why. But perhaps you're not into in-app purchases at all. Perhaps you yearn for the days where everything was premium and that was all you did. You paid. So you paid your money. You played your game. Well. That's what Game Club is here to answer, along with things like Apple Arcade and Google Play Pass, which are the big ones on the main companies. A little independent one popped up uh, a while back, and uh, it was actually, the games are curated by Eli, who used to run Touch Arcade, which was another mobile gaming site, which has been going on for a while, like, like Pocket Gamer has. Um, so it appeared on iOS last year. It just appeared on Android this week, and it's a similar thing to the others. So $4.99 or £4.99 a month, um, you get a month free trial and it lets you get access to, I think they're in the hundreds now, about 125 games they've got. That is and a the lot. It is a lot. And there are a bunch of premium games. They've been curated by people who do know about good games. A bunch of them are older. And the idea is that they're trying to sort of save the games from going out of date. In some cases, they've had to go in and they've had to adjust the code and bring them up to date rather than just repackage them. So they are actually sort of updating them for current devices to optimize them for like the new screen sizes that didn't exist at the time they were released and stuff like that uh, and the other thing is it's not streaming it's all about you you pay the thing and then you go to the app store and you download the game directly from the app store like you would if you were buying it that's how they got around the whole apple doesn't let other stores exist inside its own store problem right because of their wall I, I wondered how they got around it and to to give you some idea of the amount of protection that Apple throws in, uh, throws in the way of people trying to get access to, to their store, they had to submit the Game Club app 127 times. <laughs> and 126 of those times, Apple's like, nope, nope, no, 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 app, get absolutely button. Like, completely shut it down because it it's like having a little shop 
inside Apple shop and Apple not having any of them. Google, I'm sure, didn't give a monkeys. They're like, yeah. Google well. love it. Google are well up for anybody to just do anything on the platform. I mean, that's the whole thing of Android, isn't it? It's just completely open to everybody. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it, it, I'm I'm surprised that it launched on Apple first, given the whole closed garden, walled garden thing. Yeah. Um, and that's actually come up again recently because Facebook Gaming was supposed to launch on Apple, and they've submitted it five times now, and it's been rejected every single time. Oh, really? And I'm fairly certain Facebook Gaming doesn't actually like sell games it just is like a portal for hyper casual games yeah, yeah. Um, that you play through facebook and that's being rejected by apple as well so that's just quite funny <laughs> 120 more times and they'll <laughs> and they'll have it in the bag don't worry i'm sure uh, i'm sure facebook can find um a loophole faster than um a small team like game club but no it's really cool that a new service a new subscription service is coming like that i really like this whole idea of um i mean on the one hand, I think everybody's a bit burned out by subscription services. Because at the mm-hmm. minute, we're all sort of like... I, I mean, I personally have Netflix and Disney Plus and Amazon Prime and Crunchyroll. And uh, I nick my parents' Now TV. And I've got Apple Arcade. Um, and, you know, and, and all the, the other subscriptions. So Xbox Live Gold, well, Games Pass as well. PlayStation Now and PlayStation Plus, Switch Online. Like, wow, the number of really subscriptions. Yeah, I, I go all in. <laughs> Damn. But the number of subscriptions that you can get and just um, the constant like fragmentation of the market, like each one has to have its own ISP, like U- uh, USP rather, unique selling point. So game clubs is that you get access to these older games that maybe would have died without it kind of thing mm. and have now been brought back and are made for 64-bit devices and you can play them again on, on modern things, um, which is really cool and that's a great service. But like it's it's another service on top of all the other services that you can get, and yeah. so it, it all just kind of boils down to: is this 125 games that you actually want to play? Uh, is it going to be more games that you really want to play? Um, I don't know. I haven't looked into it much myself. I'm sure it's fantastic, and I wish them all the best of luck, and uh, you know, and everything like that. And if if it's clearly doing well enough that they've decided to launch it on Android after a year on um, iOS, so. It must be a good thing. But yeah, it's I always worry about the subscription thing is like how many more subscriptions do I need until I have access to literally everything? Yeah, and how much of that can I actually feasibly watch? Like I try and yeah. pare it down a little bit. So I've got Netflix. I do have Prime, but I think that's a hangover from getting a student uh, you know, cheap sub for a year and everything. Yeah. Um because of my partner uh doing a thing and then i've just like got now tv because it gives you the hbo stuff uh, and the sky bits and pieces and that's it i don't do xbox gold i don't do playstation subscription uh i don't have apple arcade because my primary device is not like i, I get stuff through you know, the work mm. accounts and everything but yeah. i don't use that because i'm an android user like i don't have a lot and even then, even with just now TV, like three subscription services for videos, plus obviously I rent movies, yep. there's still not enough time in the day to watch all the things on there that I'm actually interested in, you know? So what am I going to do with all of these like others? It's just, I, I don't know. I think you, you, sometimes your eyes are bigger than your, usually it's your stomach, but in this case mm. it's your, your fingers and your, your free time is the main thing. Like, I just like having access to stuff, even if I'm never going to use it. Just the knowledge that the door is there and open. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And you just look from a distance and go, oh, wow, I could go through there. Not gonna, but I could go I, through there. I watch, like, one episode of anime on Crunchyroll a month. And, like... <laughs> uh, but There's when so we much don't... anime on Netflix, though, surely. <laughs> but when we don't have the subscription, I'm there like, oh, man, I could really go for some Crunchyroll right now. There's some really great new series <laughs> to watch. Yeah, there is good stuff on Netflix, but there's new stuff on Crunchyroll, and I like the new stuff. There's I new need... stuff on. They they do new stuff all the time. They're doing all those Netflix commission series. There's new yeah, Baki on there, and it's rubbish. They don't do new silly romance ones, uh, but... like science types fell in love. So I tried to prove it. That title is it? <laughs> that's that, the title. that whole thing. That's the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it's so good, James. You got to watch it. That's I don't have the time. <laughs> okay, so you can go and grab Game Club now for either platform if you want. Now let's get to the meat of it. Uh, Pokemon Smile. Right. So I <laughs> I only watched the thing for this this morning, and uh, uh, yeah, all right, it's adorable sort of, but um, wider implications here. So what this is? This is a free app. The idea of which is to make brushing your teeth a fun activity. Uh, by allowing you to catch Pokemon and 
defeat cavity causing bacteria <laughs> while you brush. So the idea here is that you're supposed to stick your phone somewhere and it watches you. And it's like a face app thing where, you know, you, you hold your phone up to your face and you've got your front facing camera. And then, oh, it'll transform you into a little Pikachu and you've got the little ear hats. It'll use AR to put stuff on your face. But the idea is you're brushing your teeth. And the idea is it will judge your teeth brushing performance using, I don't know, teeth brushing algorithm technology. Uh, and then it will judge you on that and then you will maybe win a pokemon or catch a pokemon or something <laughs> um and the, it's got the you horrible don't seem thing where... sold on this james you seem very no, confused no, no. and sad look it's it's obviously for a tiny little tiny little people and th- <laughs> to get them to brush their teeth fine uh it's got that thing where you can see like the camera's placed inside the mouth and so you've got a row of teeth with the pokemon sitting inside it as if it were yep. dancing around you're gaping more <laughs> Um, and I's a bit weird. I don't like it. But I find it more interesting because what the, what we've got here is the gamification of a chore. Mm-hmm. That's what this is, right? That's what they're trying to do. Encourage kids to brush your teeth. So let's make gaming fun. Um, now, on the one hand, you're going to get loads of phones covered in toothpaste and water. <laughs> yep. Maybe not great. Because everyone's got it. They've got the phone on a stand in the videos, in all of them. Like, no one has that stand. <laughs> I know. What's that? And also like, available the separate Pokemon Smile stand for your bathroom. Yeah. Like, as it happens, I do have that stand because I, I, I need to film things from time to time so I have lots of camera stands. But no kid's going to have that. They're going to be there like this with a thing, trying to look at it and brush their teeth and then all, it's going to be covered in water and goo and just, yeah, slime. And it's going to suck. Um, but what what else could we gamify, Rick? What could we fix by the inclusion of the ability to catch a Pokemon while doing it? What is your most hated household chore? My most hated household chore is definitely sweeping and vacuuming the floors. Okay. So I, I'm wondering... So, Hoover, Hoover thing, suction, suck up Pokemon like Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. <laughs> so you got your phone, you stick it, you that stand, that Hoover, the Hoover <laughs> phone stand. You know that stand everyone has. Of course. Stick that, stick that on the back of your Hoover and then... And then you have to go to different rooms and then, oh, look, there's a Pokemon. Chase him, chase him. And you suck up a Pikachu and then you catch him. That's, what? Suck up a Pikachu is not a phrase I expected to hear today. Um, no, that's a terrible idea. <laughs> I'm sorry. How, how is it any worse than teeth brushy Pokemon <laughs> smile whatever? Come on. So the, you the put, thing I, put the bins out. Pokemon in a bin. How would you even track that? It's, I don't know. <laughs> AR thing. Just go out there and you have to have your phone and then you put the thing and you, you put the bin bag in the bin and then maybe, maybe there's a Squirtle in there. And you sorting your out your recycling and as you pick up a can maybe underneath that can is a Charmander there we go washing the oh no washing the dishes you still got that same like your phone's gonna wind up in a bowl of water yeah. problem <laughs> I haven't thought this through the thing I loved most about this Pokemon Smile reveal is that um, while there was sort of, in the video in, in the Pokemon Presents bit mm. there was just a little message that came up at the bottom saying this app will not help um, defeat Cav- like <laughs> combat cavities and this kind of thing um, th- there is no guarantee that this will create a habit of your child brushing their teeth so like <laughs> in the video they have in, in, like in small letters in the fine print just gone this won't actually work by the way <laughs> No, catching <laughs> just... Pokemon does not improve dental hygiene <laughs> which Who I absolutely knew? loved um, there's some really cool other games involved in that um, presents yeah. though that we, I sh- we should say about. that yes that was the interesting thing so pokemon smile was a fun little anomaly what was the good stuff that came out of that little announcement so um the next one that's kind of announced was cafe mix um which looks like disney sum sum i don't you okay. remember the so yeah, like yeah, the little stacky that. things and then you group them all together and they disappear mm. uh, so it seems to, seems to sort of crib that gameplay but have a meta game of you're running a cafe um, and Pokemon come in and visit the cafe and have drinks and then some of them you can hire for some reason I guess they come into your cafe and become indentured slaves um, you know as as is capitalism um, yeah. and and so like that looks really cool it's got a really nice art style that's coming out next week on the 23rd 24th I think on Switch mm-hmm. and mobile uh, that'll be free to start the Nintendo way of saying that it's yes. free to play um, so yeah, that, look, that looks really cool. And Pokemon Company have done a lot of good mobile games in the past with um, decent free-to-play mechanics that aren't too. They they sort of limit how much you can actually spend. 
Um, oh, right, okay. In a few of them. So I know uh, Pokemon Magikarp Jump, if you remember that. I do remember that. Amazing piece of gameplay. You loved um, that, didn't you? Yeah. Oh, such a good game. Uh, <laughs> that, that had a spending limit of 40 quid. Um, so you could oh. spend like as much as you want, but you couldn't spend more than forty pounds overall. They got capped, um, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. Which I think was really interesting. So I think I wonder if they've kept that in other games because I know Pokemon Masters. I feel like ha- doesn't have that because um, it has more scope for more spending. Mm. But this might not. I don't know. Um, so that was really interesting. It's got a really cute art style. I really want to play that. They also said that. Um, Mega evolutions are coming to Pokemon Go. I don't know what that means. Um, Farfetch'd is everywhere in Pokemon Go now. You can get a bunch of stuff from Pokemon Sword and Shield in Pokemon Go. Uh, the Pokemon Sword and Shield Isle of Armor DLC landed while they were doing that announcement. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I saw something which... on Pokemon Masters as well. That got something. Did it? I don't think yeah. it did. Oh, I think maybe there was like attire from Pokemon Masters is in Pokemon Go now. I don't think there was anything Pokemon Masters related in the presents. Oh, okay. I could Might be wrong, because I don't really care about Pokemon Masters, but yes. Um, but the two big things, one, new Pokemon Snap. So, a sequel to the N64 classic where they've just Oh, whacked. right. Yes, well they put new in, like the game name is new Pokemon Snap. Right. Um, not Pokemon Snap 2. I so, saw people excited about this because apparently yes. there's a small niche which has been crying out for this for ages. Oh yeah, Pokemon Snap is like a, a weird cult classic because mm. it is stupid on rails photography game where basically you just hurl apples at Pokemon to knock them over and oh, then take right. photos. That's what of it them. is. It, it's a <laughs> photography much. thing. Yeah, yeah. Do you not know about Pokemon Snap? I, it's just Look at me sitting here. Of course, I don't know about Pokemon. It's a photography thing. I thought maybe you'd be into it. So it's sort of like you're you're a kid and you're working with Professor Oak to research Pokemon on an island. um, But you're the actual gameplay is like an on rails shooter almost, except you're taking photos of the Pokemon, um, and then they get ranked and graded, and you get points for that, and then you can spend those points on other things. I think. Um, But like you can use distractions and other things to like get the Pokemon to do certain things. So you can throw them an apple and they'll bounce over and eat it. Or you mm. can get a poker flute which wakes up certain animals and, and puts others to sleep. Um, and you can get other things. Like, you can throw balls at them to injure them. And ba- but basically, the fun thing that everyone did was, like, threw apples at literally every Pokemon that you go past because it usually makes them dizzy. Um, <laughs> especially if you just conk them right on the head. And then they just go... And you can take a photo of that, and it's hilarious. Um, uh, this is this. They've not really announced anything for new Pokemon Snap, but it looks like it's basically the same thing. Um, developed by Bandai Namco, so it looks really beautiful mm-hmm. and in good hands. So that looks really cool. Um, very excited about that, but no other information other than it's in development. Okay, Hooray! Okay. Um, and then the last thing is that they announced that they have another Pokemon Presents next week, <laughs> where oh, really? they're going to Jeez. announce an even bigger project. Um, who knows what that's going to be? There's a there's rumors going around that it's going to be a um, you know how they did Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, which is a remake of Red and Blue. Mm. So it's rumored that they're going to do that, but for Gold and Silver, which is the second generation mm. ones. Okay, um, okay. Or something similar like that. The most people think it's going, they're going to announce like a remake of an older game in a different style because mm. um, it's it's way too soon for them to be announcing like next Pokemon when they haven't finished the DLC of current Pokemon. No, no, and they're trying to expand that lifespan anyway with rather than just immediately going into the next yeah. game. They're maybe not doing the yearly cycle thing anymore, so... But maybe uh, it'll be something even weirder. If they're doing Pokemon Snap again, it could be Pokemon Stadium for Switch, which would be dope. Um, another again, the blank, the blank face <laughs> of a man who's never played Pokemon Stadium. God almighty. Um, Pokemon Puzzle League, that would be great. I would love that. <laughs> Grow up, Rick. Um, <laughs> right. So there's Pokemon stuff happening. You can all go and find it if you want to. There's, oh, we should say, uh, like, there's always coverage of this stuff all on Pokemon.com and all the busy stuff on Pokemon.biz uh, as well. So if you get sick of listening to us and you just prefer reading things, that's where all the good stuff lives. And it's good stuff. Oh, yes. Go and have it. All right. Let's do some new release business. Let me find my little list. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it I'm is. I'm thoroughly disappointed that you haven't called me out on my mug, by the way. I didn't see them. Sorry, it's. I I feel like I've mentioned that before. <laughs> Have you been watching? Isn't there isn't there a new like Russian one that's appeared or? Is there? Eastern oh. European one. It's like oh, it's it's a number. Three hundred sixty-five days. I think that's what it's called. It just appeared on Netflix, and I hear it's like it's um that Fifty Shades of Grey only like Russian. 
or something. And and it's I it's it's in the top, you know, they do a top ten. Yeah. It just appeared in there. And so I was like, what the hell is that? And apparently that's what it is. So everyone's downloading it uh, watching it because, you know Amazing. It's more more trash, but this time with exotic <laughs> accents if you're in the UK. <laughs> uh, great. Still haven't seen anything beyond the first movie because I can't I couldn't bear it. I skimmed the second one and it was boring even in the 10 seconds that I actually stopped to watch. They're very tedious. <laughs> the first so one's dull. It's very boring. It's like, oh, for all of the uh, shockety horror of it all and the scandals, like, this is really dull. <laughs> like, I don't know. It feels like incredibly like gentle for, uh, for what's supposed to be like raunch. And then you go <laughs> and you're like, really? Like, you're I've like, seen contract negotiations. Stuff <laughs> God. Yeah. <laughs> No, no one needs that. Okay, <laughs> games again. Where are we? Endurance. Out and about this week. We're going to start out with Endurance, which is a game from Ivan Panasenko. Uh, this is something like... He did a game called Ailment a while back, which was quite popular, and now mm-hmm. he's followed this up with Endurance. This is very... Uh, well, it opens up on a nice 16-bit looking... Uh, pixel art ship which looks a lot like the Solarco from Aliens and you go inside and then you're a little scientist and your shipmates after something weird happens suddenly start turning they get corrupted via a virus it's kind of zombie-ish um, and you have to wander around the ship and try and not die and to not die you wind up with a bunch of weapons you can use against them in twin stick shooter st- style but at the very beginning you got no weapons you're just a scientist and you have to either run away from or punch uh, your enemies in face um big maps and stuff feels almost a bit like metroidine as much your map in the top corner of the screen you mm. need to find a thing to unlock the door so you need to go back up up your way you've played this a little bit as well right yeah um yeah i think you basically nailed everything about it um i think in terms of like actual playing it it sometimes feels a bit floaty because it's you know moving around with the left thumb on one hand and then swiping to do attacks with the right mm. um but it, it sort of it works and the actual like melee, <clears throat> melee combat does feel like fairly satisfying um when you're doing it there's something there's a weird disconnect in the sense that like Within sort of a minute of playing the game, you're like punching scientists in the face. But like you, with with your like, oh, these are my colleagues. I can't believe they're doing this. Punch, punch, punch. Oh my god, they exploded into a pile of blood and gore. Yeah, like, insta gibbs. Grief. Yeah, it's just <laughs> it's a bit shocking that kind of thing. Um, but I think the actual gameplay is really interesting. I think the fact that it's free, um, also is is interesting and leads to some interesting design in the case that like so. Because at the start, I was doing a lot of fighting, and therefore, like, when you're in melee combat, you can't avoid taking damage because you will just, like, no. it's just trading blows, basically. Um, and to heal, you have to spend credits that you find throughout the game, or you can watch an ad and heal, like, 50 HP and, and then just keep watching ads until you're at full health. And actually, I thought that worked pretty well. Um, they like, also bake the ads into the gameplay in so much as, like, it will suddenly kick in when you do something in game. For example, mm-hmm. if you go and access a computer or something, an ad might pop up. Which I guess works in the sense of like, you know, logging onto a computer, you've got a screen. Um, but you can remove the ads. This is a game which you can pay for and get rid of all yeah. the ads if you want to. So uh, don't be surprised when they pop up and, and get in your way. It was one of these things where I was like, uh, it was slightly deeper than I expected it to be mm. based on... Initially, you look at it and go, oh, it's a twin-stick shooter. And it's got a lot more of the RPG stuff and inventory management and things like that. Um, I didn't get far enough into it. I played it for about 45 minutes. Um, just to see, because I was surprised it starts off quite slow, because I immediately thought I'd be given a gun and I'd just start shooting everyone. Yeah. Um, but there's a fairly, you know, there's a decent amount of running around the ship with no weapons, trying to open doors and find your way before it, it all really kicks off. Um, but yeah, it, it, interesting. I'd like to play the previous one, Ailman, and mm. see what, you know, what happened there, because he's got a name for himself based on the back of it, apparently. But uh, yes, this one's it free. Was- it was kind of fun, like, loading up the game and you get a little message like, Hi, my name's Ivan. Thank you for playing my game. If you enjoyed Ailment, that was great. If you didn't, I hope you enjoyed this new game. And I'm like, oh, okay, what's Ailment? I'd love to check that out. That's great marketing. That's, that's it is. Hi, Ivan. Well done, Ivan. It's, it's that's very, actually very clever. personable, isn't it? It's yeah. Nice. It's like, although I got a bit sick of it, remember the trend when machines started talking to you when you got a VCR and you turn it on and it says, Hello. You're like, don't you know your place, machine? <laughs> you need to tell me goodbye. I'm not that lonely. Jesus. Um, yeah, so Endurance is out for free, App Store and Google Play right now, but you can unlock if you want to. I think it's about one, £1.99, $1.99. Fancy a look. 
Uh, now, Kemco have returned. They of the Eternal JRPG, because that's all they ever do. Uh, they've built an entire empire, these guys, on making free-to-play JRPGs in the retro, you know, 16-bit style. It's what they do. It's what they've always done. When you download it, you know exactly what you're going to get. There are usually a few things they do to try and make it slightly different. There's like one or two aspects of the game they might tweak or change. But basically, the model remains the same. Uh, in the case of this one, uh, you've got a character, and that character has two souls. And each of those souls has different combat abilities. So one of the souls is kind of more into melee and physical stuff, and the other one is more into skills uh, and, you know, rangy, mana -y kind of stuff. That's the hook. One character, two souls. But beyond mm. that, uh, and upgrading skill trees and all that kind of thing, it's JRPG as you would expect. Um, there are, like, just look at, just, you know, Google Chemco or, you know, look them up on the App Store and you'll just be met with this scroll of, uh, of JRPGs. <laughs> so it, if it, I've played it a little bit, it feels like one of those. Take from that what you will. Uh, App Store and Google Play for, it's, this one's premium though, I should say. This is a, this is a moneyed game. Uh, so you can you can go and grab have a look at that. But actually, the nice thing, and I and Dan mentioned this, and I saw it as well, is that rather than everyone being a badass hero, the thing that was a little bit different is everyone's kind of crap in this game. <laughs> like the companions, rather than them being like experts and everything, you've got like they're all they're all rubbish at their jobs. <laughs> So he points I out like here, that a lot. There's a rubbish swindler, there's a less than intelligent dwarf, and there's this like quack physician who's a rubbish doctor. And that, <laughs> that's that's quite nice, because usually it's all like, you know, the, the mightiest from around the land. Yeah. But no, you're all you're all garbage. So that's quite cool. But it is still the same thing you've played before. So Ruinverse is the name of that one, if you fancy a wee look. Now, I'm going to defer to you for this, because... Uh, this is a big deal, I'm aware, but it's something that I've not played because I don't really do PC gaming um, unless it's VR. Slay the Spire has appeared. Yes. Um, this is a big it deal. It is uh, a game. I'm trying to remember. It involves cards. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like a turn-based RPG dungeon crawler type thing using cards. Um, and it's uh, got roguelike elements to it. So you have to do it in all in one run. And if you fail a run, you die. You have to start all over again. Um, but you unlock things that help you out as you keep going, and you also like learn um, new deck tactics and all that kind of thing, and you get new characters as you go and all this kind of stuff. Um, it's artifacts, isn't it? Is that the thing that you get? I the, think so. I'll be honest, I did one run of this on, on Xbox and then died, and I was like, well, that's my limit. Cause <laughs> okay. As soon as I start f facing frustration in anything, I immediately stop doing That's it. That's it. Rage quit, Rick. That's what you call it. <laughs> but we are we are very aware that this is sort of a big deal in the space because um, it was a kind of not revolutionary, but the taking the deck builder stuff, mixing it with the roguelike, and then mm. mixing it with like a full on RPG where like your the character that you're making is your deck, if you like. Um, and it was a little mini mixture of combination combination of things that hadn't really been done before i guess in the same way that clash royale took the oh it's a sort of it's a moba but it's a sort of small and the thing mm. and the five sessions and now everyone does a clash royale clone um it had a big impact like that and reviews were through the roof everybody loved it it came to consoles as well now it's on uh ios we expect it to appear on android soon i think we were expecting it simultaneously but it didn't happen so we'll see what happens there but uh, Dan's done a big review for it over on PG.com. It's come over very, very well. Unsurprisingly, like Hearthstone and all those other games, they work brilliantly on touchscreen. Yeah. Almost better in some respect. Um, the only UI niggles he has is there's a couple of issues where like there are some things hidden in the lower right-hand and left-hand corners of the screen, which are a little bit awkward. And sometimes when you're dismissing something, there's a couple of buttons that are maybe a little bit too close to each other and you go mm -hmm. to dismiss and you go, oh, I've accidentally attacked someone. <laughs> um, but apart from that, like it's all come over really, really well. Uh, it's premium. I think we're talking like in the six, seven pound territory. Yep. Don't want to speak so. out at church, but I think it's you know uh, up there. But it's immediately shot to the top of the you know, app store. And uh, I can see why, having seen some of the gameplay videos, our man Cameron Bold, he played the game before, he did a little video for PG as well. Uh, so you can go and watch that or read Dan's review. But yes, everyone's very pleased uh, that it's come out as well as it has. So iOS at the minute, we'll 
update you as soon as it appears on Android, um, if and when. What else have we got? Oh yeah, before we talk about the frug, uh, Stone Age World has appeared. Now this is an IP from like 20 years ago, apparently. I'd never, never heard of it, have you? <laughs> nope. Okay, no idea. Fine. So it's a prehistoric MMO, which takes a mixture of the classic MMO stuff of going around and speaking to people, getting missions, persistent world, yada yada. But all this time, it's full of dinosaurs, because we're in the distant past, and you need to collect the dinosaurs. So it's got that Pokemon-y creature capture aspect to it as well. It is super cutesy, the new visualization stuff that's been done for it. I think it's NetWorld or NetEase or Net someone. Netmarble, there you go. One of the nets uh, have taken on the mantle this time. And uh, yeah, it looks like it's skewing very kid-friendly, super-duper cutesy. Nicely nicely done. Like, looks good. Um, almost a little bit like uh, How to Train Your Dragon-ish art style. Um, and I have precisely zero interest in it whatsoever. <laughs> Same, and that's why I didn't play it. I'm playing this. Uh, it's not It's not for me. I'm not going to get into a dinosaur MMO with creature collection. I don't really care. But I understand that there are pre-existing fans of this one. Uh, so this might be of interest. And from what I've seen of it running, I've looked at a couple of people who were fans because their opinions are probably better. And they were like s cautiously positive about it. Says it feels okay if a bit repetitive. Um, but that's free to download. That's the App Store and Google Play at the minute. Stone Age World is the name of that one. Uh, and it's not the last one, but still, Shadow Frog, or Shadow Frog, <laughs> as I will always be calling it. Uh, Why? But I don't know. I just <laughs> something something about the word frog, which needs to be said. Frog. Um, I, I just I don't think it does. But don't you know, interrogate the logic of this. <laughs> you will be left. Let's wanting. talk about the game instead. All right, bouncy uh, platforming business, in it. Yeah. Uh, so it's like auto runner platformer type thing. Um, kind of like Rayman. It's kind of like a mixture of the Rayman Mini and like the actual Rayman mm. games. Um, in the sense that like it's an auto runner and you tap to jump and then you can tap again to wall jump and do that to change direction. Um, but also like you have a shadow of yourself mimicking all your actions and if you bump into them you die. Um, yeah. Which is it's always a really neat mechanic, but that's like the whole selling point of this game is like every single level. You have to collect three keys, and there's these maze-like environments. But also, there is always a shadow of you following you, mimicking your mo movements. So you've got to like take that into account when you're doing your jumps. It's like, okay, well, if I jump here and jump there, then he's going to do that, so I should wait here and that kind of thing. I really like that style of that platforming style. I think it really adds a lot to a game, um, and it's cool to see a game just adopt it so fully. Um, it's a memory test thing as yeah. much as anything, because like the to to be clear, when you start, you you press tap and the, and your frog immediately starts running, so it's auto runner. And then maybe it's I don't know two three seconds, and then your your black the nega version, if you like, of your character with red eyes appears and starts charging after you. And yes, it will do exactly what you did, but just three seconds later. So mm. you have to be very you have to like plot your route. I'm gonna, as you said, you jump here. And then no. So by the time he gets here, I'll be able to do that and leap over just before he jumps. And uh, right, okay. Uh, so it's quite. It's an easy onboarding process. It's very simple start, but like it quickly you go oh oh oh. Yes. And then you have to start really thinking about what you're doing. Um, what do you think? Like visually, it's it's standard. I think. It's like, we've simple. Seen lots of this. Yeah, it's simple. We've seen a lot of games like this before. I really like it though, because as I say, I like I'm a big fan of that style, that style of platforming and that kind of like puzzle platformer in the sense that it's all about your reflexes, but when to time things and all that kind of thing. Less about like to actually solving puzzles. Um, so I really like that sort of reflex timing based puzzle and that kind of thing. The one thing I would say is that I um, again rage quit Rick. I I. Uh, <laughs> I, so I was like bouncing around happily and I grabbed a key and I was doing a whole thing and then it was the like a, a section where it was all just walled off and it was just wall jump, wall jump, wall jump and then slide down and then jump over at this point. I was like, hell yeah, it feels great. And then I walked into a spike that I could barely see because it's the spikes just aren't quite obvious enough when you're sort of yeah. in the thick of it. Um, and I was like, oh. And it was really disappointing to have like a great run just completely ruined by like two tiny pixels that you can't entirely see. So I think, you know, a little bit more obvious... Um, art work would be would go a long way just to highlight like there is a danger here because I didn't even see it when I was like 
because I was going back on myself and I didn't mm. see it the first time I jumped over it. So, you know, just being able to be a bit more aware of that, I think would be easier. Or maybe it was my fault for not paying more attention. Um, but I just oh. think like a little bit more handholding in that regard would have been nice. But as a game, as a concept, I really like it. I think it plays really, really well. Um, like that, that whole thing of just tap to run, tap to jump, done. Um, that still yeah. works great. Like those yeah. Rayman games, beyond looking amazing and everything, there was a real... We held them up for a long time as an example of this is how you take a console property mm. and then adapt it in a way that keeps the essence of the game alive whilst changing the controls to something that works well on a touchscreen, i.e. a one-tap or one-jump thing. They yeah. didn't. They could have quite easily have just brought the Rayman over, and they did. They did the PS1 version at least. They ported mm. that over. And then, you know, you're, you're doing the D-pad and you're doing the virtual buttons, and it's like, this is... Yeah. You're always kind of playing it, like going, yeah, cool game, wish I was playing it on a controller. Yeah. That's always the feeling. And with the Rayman Jungle Run, Rayman Fiesta, and all of those games, it was just like immediately you start running and then the leaping felt so good and mm. you, there was no point where I was like I wish I was playing other Rayman because it became a different game slightly yeah. uh, and a, a great one not better or worse or anything just really really good uh, and this yeah f- follows the same idea in a very lo-fi pixel art style it's the mm. same sort of tappy principles a little bit slower um, but uh, no, I know I liked it I think it, it works I think maybe the art style was a bit lackluster for me it's quite nice and compact because it's only 30 levels at the moment. I don't know if they're right. updating at any point. Um, but it is also free and another one which I think you can unlock for maybe a buck, two bucks, something like that. Um, but broadly, no, it was cool. And if you if you yeah. fancy some shady food, then you can get that. It's only iOS at the moment. <laughs> Shush, I'm going to keep saying it. Uh, also, they did a game called Early Worm. This is uh, Odd Rock, the creators. They did a game called Early Worm, which we also really liked. So if you play Shadow Frog and think, Ooh. maybe go back and check out how Uh, We'll mention this. This was technically last week, I think. It might have been early this week. I'm not sure. But uh, Little Orpheus came out. You started playing through this, haven't you? This is the Apple Arcade game. Yeah, that was last week. This is one from the Chinese room. I don't know Mm. if you're particularly familiar with their works. Dear Esther and Amnesia, they did that as well, didn't they? Amnesia, uh, A Machine Machine for Pigs, pigs, the the sequel. sequel. Yeah. Um, and also Rapture everyone's gone to the Rapture yes everyone's yeah. gone to the Rapture and they did a, a Google Dra- Daydream game that I think a lot of people forget about um, I think it's called So Let Us Melt okay um, and yeah this is this is so like if you think of the Chinese room games and you think of like Dear Esther and, and everybody's gone to the Rapture you think of first person exploration game walking wandering sim. around mm. um, beautiful music in the background walking sim kind of thing yeah this is nothing like that. This is completely different. This is a 2D platformer limbo style um, where you're li- you're just sort of walking from left to right, doing jumping, interacting with blocks kind of thing. Um, but like with high, very high production values and beautiful artwork and, and all that kind of thing. And it's all about like, you're, I think, a r- failed Russian cosmonaut who was told to fire an um, atomic bomb into the center of the earth to see if we could if Russia could colonize the the center of the earth or something like that, um, he's called very Ivan diff- Ivanovich. Yes, and everybody's everybody talks like this, and I am very Russian, you see, and all that kind of like silly sort of like it's poking the, fun it's at a communist killer. era. Russia. I have nondescript Eastern European accent. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, everybody right. talks like that and all that kind of thing, and it's very it's it's sort of whimsical and very odd and I like it's one of the few games where I was like I have to turn the music on for this because Jessica Curry's uh, um, compositions are, are amazing and this one is like jaunty upbeat Eastern European music and, and that kind of thing and it's so different to what Chinese Room usually does mm. and it but it feels so good and it's just a testament to them as a studio that this game can come out and still be by them who have like this very specific niche of what they do and yet they've made this game that's nothing like it and it's like oh wow this is actually really really good and really enjoyable and the jumping feels right and the the touchscreen controls feel right because it's so you uh left side screen scrolling, to move, isn't right? it? that's the that's yeah. the angle isn't it Left, 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 left side of the screen to move. So you swipe left or right and hold it to go left or right. Right screen to tap or hold to interact with objects to push them around. Um, swipe up and down to climb vines and, and all that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, it feels a lot like a lot of the two D platformers you'll have played before. So like I say, it felt a lot like Limbo and Inside. Hmm. Um, in that that sort of like the camera swoops out and zooms in and specific parts to give you that interaction. Um, what sets it apart, I think, is the the story, which is very silly um, 
and it's go. I, I've only played like the opening sort of section, and it started going into really weird places with dinosaurs in the center of the earth and all this kind of stuff. Um, so I can imagine it's going to go some even weirder points um, throughout. But yeah, I think it's 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 a really interesting game. It's really interesting to see a company like try something completely different, different and new. Um, and I think if you have Apple Arcade, you should definitely give it a go. And if you haven't got Apple Arcade but you want that kind of good. 2D platformer, definitely worth getting a trial to check this one out. I think this is this is this is one of those games that's gonna that if if enough marketing went behind it, this could be like a subscription seller for Apple Arcade because yeah. it's that it's cool and interesting, and pretty vibrant. Yeah, it's like, beautiful, really as well. nice looking. And there's a lot of like set piece stuff because he jumps around through time periods and everything. So yeah. you have bits that are in black and white. You have a bit where the, the bit that Cameron covered in the video is um, him being chased by a T-Rex basically or rather there's a huge T-Rex in the background and you're on a platform in the foreground you have to keep ducking and avoiding it or putting an egg on your head and hiding under it and then stopping when the T-Rex pops his head up looks around goes back down then you move forward uh, it looks lovely almost like to me it reminds me of because it's not like a really fast paced flowing it feels almost like the games like um, Flashback in Another World and stuff like yes. that from way back in the day where it's very like you know, they're not really, really fast and agile. It's got that kind of doof, 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 platform yeah. up, very deliberate movements. Um, and it's more about the world. But no, they're very interested. I'm really looking forward to playing this. So Little Orpheus is the name of that one. That's Apple Arcade only uh, at the moment. Okay, that'll do. First pod passed back after the <laughs> PG. Did you just call it a pod pass? I did. I called it a pub pass. Because that's how that's how frazzled I am at this point. <laughs> but it's okay, because we made it through once again. Thank you for joining me, Rick. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure to chat with you, James. It's a good chat. It's a good chat every time. And we will be back again next week, because there's no conference. Uh, and I think Ooh. maybe Dan will be making an appearance next time. We'll keep the keep the, the, the rotor going. But in the meantime, hopefully you found a game there in that big old list that was good and fun. Go to podgamer.com and biz to find links to all the things you talked about and lots more. And uh, very importantly, do a little subscribe and do come back and join us next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.